Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'll be talking about the devotion system in Grim Dawn, keeping it as straightforward and clear as I possibly can. Ok, stop laughing. The devotion screen is one of the things I avoided as a new player. It looked incredibly complicated and I couldn't figure out how or why I would be using it. In simple terms, devotion points are allocated to gain additional attribute points to increase damage and resistances and to obtain unique skills that can only be acquired on the Devotion screen. The main source of confusion and intimidation on the Devotion screen is the way the groups of bonuses and skills are depicted as star constellations. The more you play the game, the more you appreciate the artistic way this has been done, but to begin with, it just looks impenetrably complex. It doesn't help that you are most likely to have zero devotion points to allocate the first time you ever see the screen, so it'll feel like some kind of endgame nerdfest reserved for experienced players only. To acquire devotion points, you have to restore shrines that you find during your exploration of the game world. Some are easy to discover, as they stand on the side of paths you will have to travel during the main storyline. Others are hidden away in optional areas you may miss completely or never fully explore. Shrines can be restored in one of two ways. Desecrated shrines are restored by fighting enemies spawned by the shrine. Ruined shrines must be restored by sacrificing an item you may or may not already have in your stash or inventory. Most items are easily obtainable, but occasionally a rare component or item is needed. In this example, I'm restoring a desecrated shrine through the divine power of extreme violence. I had already acquired a devotion point from the burial cave during the main storyline. I now have two devotion points, but what should I do with them? A good way to start figuring out what you might want to spend your devotion points on is to look at your character skills for example, your main damage skill, to see what damage types you should be trying to improve. On this soldier, Force Wave does physical damage, and later nodes in the skill branch add piercing and bleeding damage. The Devotion screen has a search function, where you type in a text string, and the constellations that include stars which match that search string will have their stars highlighted in red. I'm taking a closer look at this Falcon constellation and I can see it boosts physical damage and bleeding damage. Perfect for me, for now, with my current main skill. Here's a tip. You can undo anything and everything on the Devotion screen. Your decision here is not final and you can reclaim points in the same way that you can reclaim skill points. The cost is different, but never ridiculous. Ok, let's jump back in time to cover the thing I deliberately missed out. How the heck do you start spending points when the only available constellation nodes are ones you're not really interested in, those five stars around that five-pointed crossroads thing in the middle? Remember how I just said you can reclaim points? All of this is going to start coming together now, trust me. You unlock constellations by spending points on other constellations to increase the number of affinity points you need. See those five colours listed down the left side of the screen in that box? Grim Dawn calls those colours affinities, because lore and devotions and shit. Falcon needs one point in purple to become unlocked. Those other constellations I've drawn a purple line around also need one point in purple to become unlocked. Higher tier constellations need more affinity points. Many need points of more than one colour. OK, so maybe you aren't interested in the purple node of the crossroads, but you need to put a point in one of those five nodes to get started. There's no way around this. However, see how Falcon has a completion bonus of three green and three purple. This means Falcon is a self-supporting constellation. With the original Purple Crossroads node and Falcon complete, you will have four points in purple. Falcon only needs one point in purple to be active. You can reclaim the Crossroads point, and Falcon will stay active because you have three purple points from Falcon. 
the devotion screen doesn't care where the earned points came from. Well, that covered reclaiming points and the joy of completed constellations, but let's go back and see how I got that complete falcon in the first place. I need six restored shrines to give one point for the crossroads node and five to complete falcon. If you fully explore the area north of Devil's Crossing at the start of the game, you'll find seven shrines. There are plenty of guides and checklists around to show you where they all are if you don't fancy finding them all yourself. The tooltip on the Devotion skill will tell you how it activates. The Falcon Swoop activates on Attack. This means your attack, not you being attacked. That's important to understand. Binding the skill to Force Wave means it will have a 15% chance to activate whenever Force Wave is used. If I never use Force Wave, it will never activate. Keep this in mind as the game won't tell you if you're not using a skill. The percentage chance to activate can change depending on the cooldown of the skill you bind it to. If I bind Falcon Swoop to Blitz, the chance increases to 51%, because Blitz has a long cooldown and Force Wave does not. Always check the tooltip to make sure you understand the conditions for activating the Devotion skill. For example, Messenger of War's Retaliation skill only activates when your character is hit by melee attacks. The list of skills you can bind this to will include skills that are not permanently active. Binding a Devotion skill to a skill that is not permanently active is never a good idea. Wherever possible, bind Devotions that activate when you are being hit to skills that are permanently active. If this is not possible, compare the activation criteria of the skill with the activation criteria of the Devotion to see if there is an acceptable overlap. I've highlighted the best skills to bind the Messenger of War skill to, anything that is permanently active. This is most likely to be one of your toggle skills, but always check the tooltip to make sure you're getting the result you think you're getting. Several Devotion skills that activate on attack can be bound to pets. This means that the pets attacks will cause the Devotions to activate. You'll notice that any devotion skills that buff pets or that summon other creatures cannot be bound to pets. This is obviously to prevent some kind of infinite summoning loop going on. But mostly you'll be quite pleased with the results if you bind attack skills to your pets. One final thing to note. The highest level constellations do not have completion bonuses, as in this example. Sometimes you'll need to plan ahead and get creative with the way you earn and reclaim affinity points. As always, thanks for watching. If you found any of this useful, or not, please let me know in the comments.